In any Pokemon region, there are many Pokemon who will grow to be favorites of the fanbase, claiming hearts and minds like no others. However, there are also annoyances. Pokemon like Whitney's Miltank that will haunt your nightmares for as long as you keep playing the game. Now, as far as the Johto annoyances go, some of the most memorable ones are Whitney's Miltank and Claire's Kingdra, but among the more forgettable normie Pokemon of Gen 2, there might lie a Pokemon who's not totally what he pretends to be. I'm talking about this guy. Guy. Now, if like us, you played the Johto games before looking stuff up on the internet was commonplace, you will realize how much of a problem it is finding the squirt bottle required to wake this thing up. It could take you weeks of trying to speak to everyone in Johto for someone to maybe give you a hint on how to proceed forward after beating Whitney. However, once you do this part, you will realize the funny tree blocking your path to Ecruteak was a rock-type Pokemon, of all things. Not only that, but that would be the only time you were to encounter that rock-type in all of your adventure, which makes it quite a special Pokemon, which might make you think that this fake tree thing is a superb Pokemon, right? Well, this is why we're asking. How well did Pseudo Wudo do in the Johto games? Let's find out. Pseudo Wudo starts with a moveset featuring two decent physical moves in Rock Throw and Low Kick to back its not very bad stats. It also gets access to Dig, which despite only being base 60 in power, provides great coverage to the rock type Pseudo Wudo. With this moveset, the first gym that Pseudo Wudo needs to fight is Morty, the ghost type gym leader, which Pseudo Wudo does quite well in thanks to Dig. What Wudo fears is Curse Chip and being put to sleep. The former can be dealt with by switching out of Curse, but the latter, especially paired with Gengar Dream Eater, can be deadly. Overall, Wudo can get two or three kills as long as it's not put to sleep, and it prefers to stay out of Gengar's business. Speaking of stuff Pseudo Wudo does not want to mess with, next up is Chuck. Now, hilariously enough, Pseudo Wudo can, if it gets lucky, 1v1 Primate due to the sheer great physical defense. However, even the most massive RNG cannot save it from Polyrath, which only needs one surf to drown it. With Polyrath taken care of, the next challenge to face is Price, the Ice Gym Leader. We mentioned that Wudo is particularly great into the exploding electrodes at the end of the Mahogany Rocket Split thanks to Wudo's defense and typing. With Price, however, Wudo does not suck as much as we thought it would. The reason for that is that though it faces two water types and one ground type, none of those Pokemon have stab moves for the types that are super effective into the pseudo Wudo. As a result, Wudo can beat Seal and Dugong with its decently powerful Rock Slide, but still can't beat Pillow Swine, the blizzard of which is still enough to massively damage Wudo even through neutral damage thanks to Pseudo Wudo's non impressive special bulk. On Jasmine, Pseudo Wudo's dig is all that is needed to destroy the Magnemites on her team, but come to the big bad Steelix with its mighty stab Iron Tail, there is nothing Wudo can do. And if you think Wudo's infamous physical defense can help, well, not only is Steelix strong, but it beats Wudo at its own game of stupid defensiveness and easily beats it. If Pseudo Wudo could at least beat the Magnemites on Jasmine, Claire's non ace Pokemon comes prepared with a nasty, super effective surf, easily two hit KOing it. Now, Wudo might KO one Dragonair on some lucky scenario, such as the AI missing a Thunder Wave or clicking Thunder Wave on a Wudo holding a paralyzed Cure Berry. It'll fall to the first Dragonair in any other scenario, and let us not even think about the Kingdra matchup. Going forward to the Elite Four, Pseudo Wudo has a few tricks for each Elite Four member. For Will, it can try to hit one of the Zatus or Jinx with Rock Slide, but it will never beat more than one of these targets thanks to its poor special defense and speed. The Koga matchup, while way better, thanks to Koga having Bug, Flying, and Poison-type physical attackers in Crobat, Ariados, Venomoth, and Muk, 
the poor speed comes back to bite hard, as Wudo will always sustain a toxic and slowly gets worn down, getting two or three kills. On Bruno, Wudo will, despite its fighting weakness, be able to 1v1 Onyx, Hitmonchan, or Hitmontop, as Onyx has less base attack than Oddish, and neither Hitmons have good enough moves for it. Also, it apparently can take this, though it still loses to the Hitmonlee and Machamp destroys it. For Karen, Pseudo Widow equipped with Earthquake and Low Kick has a super effective move for everything barring Bowel Plume, with one hit KOing anyway with Petal Dance. However, poor speed strikes again and Wudo has to pick its target. It'll be Gengar plus one Pokemon most of the time, but nothing more. On Lance, the flying type champion, Pseudo Wudo has a super effective move on everything, but it gets destroyed by Gyarados' water move and gets hit decently hard by special moves from Dragonites. It matches up pretty well against Charizard and Aerodactyl, however, and may also try to beat one of the big dragons. The overall Elite Four performance of Wudo is actually decent. Not the best Pokemon of all time, but not trash per se. For Kanto, the Wudo's performance varies. It smashes Surge, Janine, and Blaine with relative ease, gets smashed by Sabrina and Misty. Against Erica, it can at least beat up the Jumpluff. We also managed to destroy Brock with Wudo, but that was mostly because we were overleveled, which we should maybe concede credit to Pseudo Wudo for anyway, since you always are overleveled for Brock in Gen 2. Against Blue, Pseudo Wudo will help its trainer be Pidgeot and Arcanine, though it has to be careful switching into a flamethrower as Pseudo Wudo does not like special moves. Speaking of that, everything else has either a special move that destroys the Wudo or Earthquake in Rhydon's case, though for some reason it didn't use the move against us while we beat it up. Against Red, Wudo will be Pikachu and Charizard, but the most valuable it can be is beating the Snorlax, the biggest threat in Red's team, and the move it uses to do that is one of the moves it had from the very start, Low Kick. Not only a fighting type move, but a move that will inflict 120 base power damage to the heavy Snorlax. Couple that with the rock typing and good physical defense, and you'll get a decent lax counter that doesn't need explosion unlike Graveler. So overall, Pseudo Wudo is way better than we thought it would be. It makes itself somewhat useful in most major fights, and though it's not the most helpful thing out there, can be good on a playthrough if one is willing to try it out. So, what do you think of the Imposter Tree Pokemon? Would you give it a shot over more conventional picks like Geodude? Or do you think it's too sus for your taste? Feel free to tell us in the comment section. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. Check these videos out while you're at it, and on that note, have a great one.